Welcome to Total Training for Adobe Fireworks CS5. I'm Dee Sadler, an Adobe Freelance Professional, Adobe Certified Instructor in Over 5 Programs, Adobe User Group Manager, and Adobe Community Professional for the Creative Suite and Frequent Speaker at Conferences. In this Fireworks CS5 training, we learn the ins and outs of Adobe's Vector Web Graphics Program. We'll work with vector graphics and bitmaps. We'll add some text, layers, slices, buttons, and even learn how to work with pages and how Fireworks can help you prototype. We'll also show a workflow between Fireworks and the other applications within the Creative Suite. We'll begin by getting to know the work area. The very first time you open up Fireworks, you're going to get your start screen, and it's really just the same as all the other Adobe Creative Suite programs. So we have our open recent item, up to 10 of the recent items. We can just open something from here, and we can create something new from here. So if you are brand new to Fireworks, then you're going to be able to either create a new Fireworks document or from a template. If you are used to Fireworks from the past, then the from template part will be a little bit new. We have some brand new, really great templates in Fireworks CS5. So let's just open a brand new document for now. And this is our basic new document dialog box. So I can give it a width and a height, and whether I want it to be in pixels, inches, or centimeters. And I can choose my resolution here. Now this is something that a lot of people forget that Fireworks can do. So Fireworks, even though it's basically a web vector graphics program, you can also do print things with it as well. So if I needed to make a logo, for instance, then I could make it 300 pixels per inch instead of 72, and then it's going to be able to go to print as well. So I also have a canvas color. Do I want just white, transparent, or a custom color? And I can also get to my templates from here, but we'll take a look at the templates later. So I'm just going to give it just 500 by 500. And now I'll click OK. So now I've just got my very basic document here. So let's take a look at our panels and our workspaces and see how you can make your own workspace. So in the upper right hand corner here of my screen, I have my panels, just the predefined panels. So I've got an expanded view, an iconic mode, iconic mode with panel names, which mine happens to be at at the time. I still have the option to really to make it anything that I want. So for instance, if I click on one of these, my panels pop out. And if I click on my double arrow here, it will expand it out so I can see all of my panels at the same time. If I close that little double arrow back up again, and then I take it by the very, very edge, and then pull to the right, I can go all the way down to just my icons. So depending on how much room that you have on your screen, you may want just to see the icons, or you might want to see all of the panel itself, just depending on how you like to work. So like most of the Creative Suite programs, all of my panels are underneath my window menu. So I have the ability to hide my panels from here. I can make a duplicate window. I can use my application frame. I can see my extensions from here. So I have my Access CS Live my news and resources, and Cooler. And if you haven't seen Cooler, it's a great way to pick colors for your projects. And we'll take a look at that later. I've got my tools and my properties, my optimize, and I can't see necessarily my common library, but I know that it's down there. States, history, auto shape, etc. So whichever panel that I would like to see, then I'm going to be able to find it here. So if I've accidentally deleted a panel, for instance, I can come back here and find it again. So I know I've got my auto shapes somewhere. And so let's say I decide that I like that up here. So all I've done is basically then grab a panel by the tab itself, and I can drag it out on its own. If I would like this to be in a different location, I can grab the tab again all by itself, and then when I pull it over into a panel, 
if I'm in between two other panel sets, then I'll get a solid blue line. And if I let go, then that's in a panel set all by itself. Now, if I take that back out again, and let me grab it by the tab. So if I pull it back over on top of a panel set, I get a blue line surrounding the whole entire panel. And then when I drop that in, that's a part of that particular panel set. OK, so now that I have that over on that particular panel set, let's say that that's exactly how I would like to work. And if I wanted my panels to look just like that, I would go underneath my Window menu, and I would pull down to Workspace Layouts, and then I would save my current layout. The next time my panels get all in a disarray, then I can come back in and choose that set in my dropdown, and it's exactly the way I'd like to see it.